Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Afternoon Live. So we're going to talk about the market bounce, which was the expected scenario today, right? First things first. Then we see what happens at the hour of the 80 May. We'll talk about it. Then what to expect now moving forward and get into the tickers and trades that you are in, that you're requesting. Let's talk about them. So congratulations. If you hit the bounce today, if you came in cash, it's always that nice opportunity of you have that dry powder available to you and you catch these opens with a little bit of fear on charts that still have a lot of strength, a little bit too far extended on the ES, you know bounce is gonna happen. And then when the bounce allows you to let it mature, you're gonna have a big payday. So I'm assuming people got paid today and you're enjoying it. Now, if you came in and you're oversized and heavy positions and you're looking to be protective, the bounce is still helping. If you sold early, then give some price action time to develop, that would have been a mistake. But you were, hey, allowing some time to develop, these bounces are allowing you to say, hey, that's okay. You know, everything's fine. Let's see what's gonna happen next. So let's talk about what's gonna happen next. Just wanted to make sure I had no technical issues over here, which we apparently don't like we had this morning. So first things first, we wanted to see what was gonna happen in relation to this hourly candlestick, the spinning top at the bottom of a trend, potentially giving us the bounce back up to the hourly 80 main. Now, this was a really good signal here because what we should have anticipated was that early bounce, the early price action, then let's see what happens on that two minute chart. And it gave a great signal. And this is what I was posting in Rick's Trades, if you weren't following along, but it was a market thread at channel. This portion right in here was the opportunity for us to see, okay, what's the market telling us right now? We got up near the hour of the 80 May, wasn't a touch. This was a zone that I was worried that if we were rejecting here, we would still be in an impulsive move down and this would be a stronger, a stronger retracement. This bounce tells us it's not a strong retracement anymore. Okay, just for starters, it's telling us it's not a strong retracement anymore. Um, if we were had rejected in here and broken down, then we we're gonna be looking in that golden pocket. The signal was on that two minute time frame, right in here. If you were following along, right? We, where's the bell? The bell, okay, bell pushes down, lower high. Now in here, always like this is the money play, right? In here is the money play. You make a new low and you don't get follow through. You have your lower high, right? Which is essentially a double top. We needed like this would have been a squeeze right in here to get that run up. But they came back down, revisited the lows, new low, no follow through. Now another lower high, higher low, lower high in here. I had this trend line just about here. And then when it broke and this candlestick had no volume, so no, like we always talk about in, in a triangle, you might need to readjust this lower trend line. You never know exactly perfectly where it's gonna be. Anyways, close right over there. And then we got the break, higher low continuation, higher low continuation, and then the squeeze started to happen across. But this break in here, this new low, no fall through, this in here bouncing off of this lower trend line, and then the break was a sign that we were going to bounce. Now, my concern from like a bearish top fishing uh, point of view is this volume, okay? This makes it very difficult to, I know like FAC was asking about getting into the top fish for the lower highs. This makes it very concerning for me if I'm gonna try and go bearish in here, which I'm not. I would want to see a better signal, okay? Let's go back and look at a few of the other instances, but also when we have a scenario like this and this last night's action right? Overnight action versus what happens when the bell rings? What kind of volume do we see coming in? Until we see something significant, that if this was a low volume bounce, right? We, boom, bull vol bear volume comes in, it's going to drop it right back down. Also, we shouldn't bounce to the GP and we're bouncing to the GP immediately, which gives us the potential thought process of this could just be shaped now, right? This could just be shaped. And the other thing we have to do is watch what the market leaders are doing. So if we look at this, and we see what the market leaders are doing. What's Amazon did by algos are on, they're pushing it up. What's Apple doing? Is Apple showing us a red flag yet? Dip by, let's look at the daily, right? 
massive dip buy in here on this daily. And the volume is going to surpass yesterday's. Well, it should, right? Unless we really die up. So I would not be convinced right now in terms of a top fish, like scaling into a top fish or being sure of a top fish until I see a signal that gives us something along these lines, right? Upper wicks, upper wicks, upper wicks. And then we start to roll over. Um, where was another one in here? Like, a, no, that's not it. Nope. Go a little bit further back in here, right? Almost like a double top in here, drop us down. Where's another one in here? Okay, here's a better looking one, but this one was more extended, which allowed for a bigger retracement. We didn't see the bull volume in here on this bounce. Like look at that bounce right in there. Nothing, right? So it allowed us to continue to push up. But this is what you don't want to get in front of, right? You don't want to get in front of. This is a, you know, this is, this would have been misleading, right? But inside Barbara Bull went up, then it continues to go. You don't want to get too early in front of it. And then you get this type of a signal, a double top, that's the better signal. But because of what we're seeing in the market leaders, Apple, Amazon, I'd want to be a little bit patient if you're looking for the top fish, thinking we're going to go down. Now, my interpretation of how I'm reading the chart, which could be wrong, I've been wrong a million times before, I'll be wrong a million times again, is that we're going to go for a new all time high. I think what we have got in here is we're going to look at something along these lines, right? And then that's our correction. And now we're going to do something like this and make a new all time high. And we're going to break through the 43, 47, and we start thinking about a much higher move. That's how I'm going to read it for now. Now we got three hours left, right? We, we're going to see how this, even the, even the futures market, we're going to have to see how the futures market is. If you're looking for a scalp, a short term bearish scalp, then you're going to go off of the GP, right? You're going to rely that the GP is not going to be broken and there's always a short term trade. But as of right now, because of the way this candlestick was engulfed in here, because of the way the daily volume is going to look and this candlestick with the big lower wick, I'd want to be a little bit more patient to see a stronger signal. To pause right under the GP is odd, like we should get there, but we do have this wick in here and that real body close right in there. So we would look at that line chart right in there, right? That maybe it stalls in there and that's the opportunity. But I think even if that's the opportunity right now, with the volume that we should be able to retest these levels and then if it's a double top we hit the gp doesn't get fall through doesn't break through it that's your opportunity to look for a top fish but as of right now if you're looking at this and you look at what we use right we got the ema on our side we got the five minute higher low pattern on our side 15 minute ADMA hasn't even been touched 30 minutes going to be a while before we can get into there i'm going to anticipate we're going to do some form of a bull flag and get up into that gp zone that's how I'm reading the chart right now. That's how I'm reading this price action right now. That was the goal signal in here. And we still got names like Amazon just made a new high in here. Disney is doing what we thought it was gonna do. BA is doing it now. Potential squeezes still haven't happened. A Fubo, a Palantir. You know, AMC is squeezing, it's the lead squeeze right now. Apple, algo's turning on now, right? So in my opinion, from a bearish perspective, I'd want to have something a little bit stronger from a bullish perspective. You have the whole chart, right? The market's built to go up. The market's been just constantly going up. This was a correction in here. We could even just get choppy and not do what I think it's gonna do, which is make a new high, right? Holding this 0.5 zone, is that we could you know, get choppy in here, but these individual names are still gonna rock right especially names that are showing us some impulsive moves now like the bottom fishing opportunities on ba and disney and amc all right let's get into it let's get into the tickers everyone's talking about and playing how's everybody doing hope you're having a good day don't forget to give a like to the video because these are live now on youtube so the more likes the better i appreciate it How was the technical difficulties this morning? Wasn't that amazing? Welcome back, Donna, to the Fit Fam. Nice to have you back. I don't know if Donna's on live right now, but it's nice to have her back. Let's get into it. Apple's the first one. So 
This is a strong dip buy. Ultimately, we are looking back up at all time high now, right? 145.09 is a double top for now. It's not a clear rejection. We had a lower open due to futures. Nice dip buy. Reminder, if we continue to close over the day, the ADMA, it is bull, right? You could always get in trouble trying to top fish. You could try and top fish this trade this whole time and it keeps on going right now. If you're gonna top fish, then you're gonna place your stop at the double top. But is there gas left in the tank? Well, the, the I can't say that the tank is emptied because look at the ADMA here. What do we use? This is our guide, right? Until we lose this. Think about this if it was a two minute time frame, a five minute time frame, a 15 minute time frame, 30 minute time frame. How we trade using the ADMA in terms of momentum. These are just daily candles. They're, they take more time. They're bigger to play out. But we could be looking back in a couple of weeks and trading at 155, trading at 163. We could be there as long as we continue to hold. So I can't say the gas has run out because until we lose this, we could continue to grind up. Think about what MVDA did, right? Think about off of the bottom in here, how much did MVDA run? And MVDA, MVDA is going to try and go 54%. It's going to try and still get that close. How much have we run here? So we ran 54% on a big cap name. How much have we run here? 17%. Now, obviously, it's the biggest cap. It takes a lot more to move it, but 17%. Um, until we lose the 18, uh, the ADMA, we don't think about the 15% correction until that is lost. Once that's lost, then we start thinking about what's the correction going to look like. So yeah, it does look like there's gas left in the tank. If you're bearish and you see this candlestick, you're not going to like it. Two minute trend right now. You can see now it looks like we're starting to turn it on, right? Five minute, right? It looks like now we're starting to turn it on. It was choppy in here, ran up higher low, and now we have the potential to run back, right back up to yesterday's highs. That's what I'm watching in Apple. Until it loses the daily ADMA, you can't you can't say that it's not it's not an opportunity to go more. And if we look at the extension target that we have in here, next target because we did get over the one to one, next target will be this 148.72. Tom, you butchered the hell out of your day. Tell me about it. What did you do? Thanks, Peter. What's up, Paul? What's up, MW? How many millions did you make today, MW? APTI. I think this is getting pumped every time I come live now. So we'll have to watch if APTI continues to get pumped. Then we're going to have to remove the viewer because that's not what we do. We don't pump stocks. We focus on the technicals. Amazon waiting for a solid swing re-entry, just small foot in the door. Hey, I understand I'm with you. I got the 3,800s for next week. Do you feel comfortable uh, what was happening earlier today? Well, you gotta feel comfortable now, right? You gotta feel comfortable now because now it started. And you can see here, getting impulsive, a little bit of a squeeze, a little bit of a climax, small climax, but until we lose the five minute ADMA, we anticipate here we are. It's gonna make a new all-time high now. We have to assume new all-time high is coming. We're not gonna get this behavior. Right, we would have needed the market to chop around versus the market doing what it's doing today to get this behavior that we talked about this morning. So right now we're looking at a bullish engulfing candlestick and we're looking back up to the upper trend line. So we'll see how this afternoon plays out, but um, you know, it's gotta be it's gotta be in swing season like Amazon. You don't wanna be missing out not having a foot in the door. It's constantly you wanna keep a foot in the door. If we double top in here, right, and then we'll see. There's gonna be time on this play. You know, there's gonna be so much time. It's it's the focus for it's likely gonna be the focus for the rest of the summer. Right? So much opportunity in here. What I'm gonna be watching right now is a bull flag, right? We wanna see a bull flag shape up. Thirty minute bull flag. 15 minute bull flag, something, right? Because we're running up a little bit too far extended, 15 minute ADMA, we know we're gonna come back and touch it. Then we'll see when we do what the bull flag looks like from there. But if we close, all things being equal, the way that today's daily candlestick, we could potentially be looking for a big gap up tomorrow, right? Anticipating the futures don't, you know, fake you out. And if the, you know, let's just say because we did see a little bit of volatility in futures, you likely, because of that volatility, we'll see how it close. If we close in a V-shaped manner, then you get concerned that the futures market will start to consolidation. So you're likely not going to want to have your full, you know, your full weight in these swings. So you be keep some dry powder in case futures get a little bit messy again, and then you have opportunity to buy buy the lows. But obviously, we got momentum in here, 
Uh, we're just going to be looking for a ball flag right now. Denise, I have 3,800s now for next week. The 4Ks that I had, I did sell. I sold them yesterday. I kept some runners, um, but it was a nice trade. Ended up being over 25K USD. So it's a good trade for what I thought was going to be a lot of idea. Ended up moving quickly. But because the 4Ks lost so much value in consolidation, as soon as consolidation starts, they're going to lose so much value. They did. I think they dropped to like up 80% today from 700% yesterday. Had to go something closer to the money. What's going to happen tonight in futures is going to be dependent on how we close. So if we close extremely strong, then I anticipate futures are going to consolidate. If we already started consolidate, we could watch for a squeeze in futures, potentially, right? But your trade, like whatever you do in the overnight market, like whatever you swing, it shouldn't be so reliant on the overnight market. If the tomorrow's open is make or break for your trade, then you're oversized. All right, you're oversized. Let's move on. Talk about AMC in at 39.79. Then you sold half, holding the rest. Listen, if, you, if you're if you in at 39.79, you, you crush the trade, you got so much wiggle room now because the idea is that potentially that's the bottom, right? It's a double bottom. This would be like a zigzag. It would be descending triangle, right? Versus the triangle that we thought we were going to get, whether, you know, you, you, could, you could think about it off of there, right? Which broke. Let's fix this up in here, which broke off of here, right? That's not the triangle, right? This wasn't the triangle either coming in this zone in here. That wasn't the triangle either. And the reason why I say this wasn't really the triangle is there's no volume reaction, right? So we're just waiting to see when the volume is going to tell us. I'm going to move this trend line up here, coming off of here. And I want to take off the extended hours to look at that actually. Actually, I had it right, but I had extended hours off. Okay, so looking at it from here, now this is going to be the major break signal is when we break through this upper trend line. But we're trying to determine where the momentum is going to come back in. Now, if we look at today's volume, it is bullish engulfing candlestick on the four hour, came off of this double bottom zone. Our focus now is to not close under the four hour ADMA. And then we're going to be thinking, because if we do close under the four hour ADMA, then I'm going to be watching this, right? I'm going to be watching, hey, maybe that was a triangle we broke below it and now it becomes our resistance. But I don't think so because we didn't have the volume to suggest there's a triangle bear break. And that's why the char chart is dropping down. There's no volume. So we're looking for a sign of volume. What do we talk about? We're looking for that volume candlestick that appears. The next one's important. We need to see increase in volume. So you're in at $39.79, $9 away from here. You sold half. Your new break even is $30. You have opportunity to allow the hourly to consolidate. We got a little bit extended. We've had a couple of apparent climaxes right in here, right? Then we drop, then we keep make a new high. You get a, no, we didn't even get bearish divergence, but we did lose the five minute ADMA. So with the five minute ADMA loss, we look for the 30, we look for a bull flag in here and we watch what kind of volume we see in the consolidation. Hourly could potentially just be an inside bar as well. So you got room and we're gonna need some room, right? You're gonna need some time to allow this to develop because what we wanna see on the next candlestick is this, which will tell us we're coming right back up to that upper trend line. It is already a huge bounce, so good job taking half because we've already bounced over $10 and a massive percentage, right, in a single day. Look at that, right? 28% bounce in a single day. The signal was there early, and this is what I talked about in the room, right? This early. This is a good sign, right? Flush it down. Okay, that's okay. Flush it down. That's great. We want to see. I wanted to actually see it flush 37.66, but what we what they only did was flush 39.71. That would have been okay. Now in here, what's gonna happen? Two minute ADMA, boom, big candlestick, they push it up. That's the entry signal right in here, right? Two minute ADMA, boom, big increase in volume. That's great. And here was the squeeze because they gave us what was an ascending triangle in here, lower trend line. Not a perfect upper trend line. That's why I drew it as a zone because you can see we came up, we pushed down, pushed down, pushed down, pushed down, pushed down, but we kept on making higher lows along the way and then it squeezed. 
little climax, higher low, and it looks like another little climax in here, lower high, and now we start the consolidation. Got to give it time. We need to see what that next candlestick is going to look like. We're going to want to see the increase in volume. All right. So just reading some comments here. Let's move on. CVE, nice daily candle continuation. All energy looks similar. <coughs> Let me see what. <coughs> Let me see what XLE is doing. So nice run here off of the bottom of XLE. What's the consolidation been like for XLE? Okay, so. Your concern right now on XLE is that this is a head and shoulders pattern, okay? right now so that's that's the one concern you gotta keep in mind in here which is a break right it is it is a technical break right in there that's the neckline so the bounce whenever you have a bear move right this is a bear pattern move there's always going to be a bounce the chart cannot continue to go in any direction for red days for consolidation and green days for consolidation this is consolidation for the bear so you have to keep that in mind you do have a technical big pattern bear break now let, let me just double check what's happening here on the monthly chart on XLE. Okay, spinning top candlestick last month. So this would be an evening start being confirmed, right? So this is a reversal pattern, but all we would be doing is looking for a monthly higher low above the ADMA. Weekly chart, it's toppy in here, right? It is toppy in here. You can see that it's struggling here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight months of trading in that range. Uh, sorry, eight weeks of trading in that range, unable to break through it. And I'm gonna go check out the crude futures because crude futures have been going up. But recently I haven't checked and I know I saw some headlines that they were pushing down a little bit. Okay, that's a weekly resistance, right? Weekly resistance getting dropped down. And let's check out what's happening here with crude. All right, so it is a weekly potential bearish and coffee candlestick. So you're gonna need some information, some more information, but if you're looking at, it's a nice daily candle right now, fig, point, figure out what the daily candle means in the larger time frame. Larger time frame is showing us consolidation is starting. We're gonna to need tomorrow's daily candlestick to close and form a big lower wick and still close with the weekly ADMA, right? Daily candlestick in here, volume not too significant, it gapped down, it was a little bit extended, this tells me we have room we have room to drop so short-term trade versus is it a positionally long-term trade 0.5 yeah that could be good right that could be good but you know we're gonna need to see that next candlestick is it a swing on this candlestick i don't think you're gonna see too much risk right worst case scenario is just an inside bar tomorrow it'd be dirty to gap it down can we come back into here a retest of the zone it makes sense to get down into there. That's the GP, that's the back test. We do have weekly and monthly candlesticks that are pointing to some further consolidation potential. Keep it in mind, but I don't wanna discourage you from swinging because it is a reversal candlestick. On a reversal candlestick, we can come up, set a lower high under the daily ADMA, and we would be looking under, right in there, right? Our previous area acting as support, daily ADMA goes in there, we use that, we reject it, then we know, okay, potential, we have a bear flag in here, and we're gonna drop down into the GP. Amazon. Woo! Oh boy. Amazon's aggressive. Let me see how far we are from that upper trend line in Amazon. Thirty-eight twenty-one. We're likely gonna hit thirty-eight today. That bull flag was so small. This bull flag was so small. 15 minute was just one candle. New all time high already.
200% already on the 3800s. All right, let's get, sorry, let's get back into tickers requested. Neil in bull of commons on August 20, 50 calls. I really like that. I think uh, if you got in earlier today, you're well, well into the percent gains right now. That was a good opportunity. Um, this was one of the ones we were talking about for the 15 to 30% correction and being in the buy zone, right? This would have been greedy to get down in here. I talked about it this morning. This would be greedy. This is potentially it. So you got the reversal candlestick Neo in bull with comments and August 2050 calls. That's a reversal candlestick. The bull volume is going to be engulfing the bear volume yesterday. I'm going to anticipate that this is going to set up a lower high. So it's not going to go straight into the 50s. Um, we're going to reject under the daily ADMA. So I'm going to anticipate that's going to be the case, but that that'll be our bottom. So we'll come up in here the daily ADMA. We'll see, right? You wouldn't want to sell too early because, you know, boom, 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 three white soldiers and then it's back up at the highs. But I'm going to anticipate this is going to happen, right? We're going to get into here and then we'll come back and make that daily higher low. When that rejection comes, the 50 calls, you're going to want to consider selling them because then we're going to push away from, we're not going to get into money and then we're going to push away from the money. So keep that in mind, right? So if we get up into the daily 80 May 48 and then we push back to 46, the value is going to drop significantly. So that could be an opportunity for you to trade around the core that you hold the shares, but you take profits on the calls. As of right now, I would not be touching it, right? Um, the momentum is here, a little bit of spike in bull volume. Yeah, a little bit of spike in bull volume in here. Just trying to see if Palantir is about to follow in here and squeeze. So everything in here, I would not be ready to sell yet. Let's look at a zone to potentially sell. So let's think about it. You know we got the day the 80 May. We know we got the bull volume in here. As the bull volume decreases, although it's strong bull volume, this is still very strong bull volume. It's lunchtime hours. Of course, it's going to be the appearance of decreasing. But until we lose that 15 minute ADMA, you don't really want to be too concerned. Until we get a climax away from it, you don't want to be too concerned. But you want to have some targets, right? If we think about this ABC correction in here, it's enough of a retracement that the bottom should, I think it's going to be in. I think it should be in, right? That should be it, right? But still anticipate that, right? So in order for this, which would be an inverse head and shoulders, we've got to come off of the top we got to look at where's the zone. That's the zone. 0.5 is the zone. Let me see what this 0.382 is. I like the 0.5 a lot better, right? Which would mean right in there. Daily ADMA will be there. The one reason why I like that a little bit better is this in here, this zone, right? That doesn't quite get there. That's more down in the 0.382 zone. So we're gonna have to watch that zone. Wow, it's a big zone, right? I mean, I could tell you, yeah, look, see we reject in here. It's such a huge zone. But because you have this in here, which is gonna line up with the 0.5, those is what I like better. Those wicks down in here, and because we flushed it, that we stall in that zone. This would be a big payday, right? To get into that zone. This is the thing we gotta watch right now. This is the four hour, okay? Gotta watch the four hour right in here. So we blasted through the hourly, right? Now we gotta watch the four hour right there. So right now, five minute higher low pattern. In here, we don't have a five minute higher low, right? It's a strong move. Then the market started to chop around, right? Neo went first. Neo went first today. Neo and AMC went first, right? Now it's here. This is the five minute higher low pattern you're gonna to wanna to focus on right now. All right, higher low, higher low, continuation of that trend. Congratulations. Two hundred fifty percent on Amazon now.
NASDAQ just pushed up. Still strength. What's Apple doing? Apple's grinding. Algos. There's going to be some more squeezes out there. Maybe shop. Watch out for shop. Shop is really lagging right now. All right, let's move on and talk about Docu 300 calls for July 16. Let's see what's happening here with Docu. <laughs> Congratulations, Andrew. Holy Jesus. Good job, man. 35,000 USD. Not because of me. You did the trade. Has nothing to do with me. I just provided commentary on it. Wow. Congratulations. Very good. All right. Let's check out uh, the docu. Woo. Gap down and rip back up. That's looking pretty good. Obviously, it's a blue sky name. We really want to get a close up over 290 23 right you could see we talked about that the other day couldn't get a close up over it you just like from historically i always watch is that where that line chart closed algos respond to it so much first any candlestick so you want that continuation momentum obviously this is looking really good we're going to close up over the day the 80 may until the day the 80 may is lost i would not be uh, worried about consolidation once it's lost then you think about okay where's the retracement going to come so as long as we continue to hold it right we flirted with it right a little flirt and back up over it this is looking fantastic 300 calls i mean we could be a 300 tomorrow right with this type of candlestick bears had opportunity today bulls are jumping on that dip Let's move on. Talk about CLF. Cleveland Cliffs. Taking entry off the bottom. Yeah, very nice. August 2020 calls. In the money. That looks really good. That's a good spot, right? And you're going to place your stop there now. It's double bottom on the daily chart. That's where your stop's going to be. Same thing we're talking about BA. I would say that's it for BA. That's the bottom. And if it's not the bottom, that's the stop. You just stop out. This is, if you want to think about a big trade on a BA, this is where we got to buy it off of. You want to think about, what is this? CLF. You need to buy off the bottom. You need to sell off the top though, right? Sell, sell, sell. And these are, you know, you know vice versa, right? Buy, 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 right? That's a great entry. That's exactly why we have chart patterns for. They give you the, the bull, the bear, entry and exit signals. Anything in the middle is nonsense and it's a bad zone to be a buyer because it's 50-50 in here. I mean, any trade you put on is 50-50, but you gave yourself the risk to reward that was well on your side. You gave yourself no risk to potential significant reward. Perfect. But you got a place to stop there now, right? Or you see something a little bit sooner that tells you, Jesus Christ, how much money are we making on Amazon right now? Yeah, great low risk entry. So I love when you have a trade plan that comes off of a pattern. And this is why we always look for patterns because we want to see a pattern um, to give us that good entry signal. 2% risk. It's 10 to one perfectly, right? Great. Now your focus is to get up over that resistance 22.59 and get a close up over the daily ADMA because you don't want this to bear flag on you. Let's move on. Uh, patient game, all cash. This market environment is making me nervous. Need a sign of clear direction across the market. Um, you know, I would say like, there's no problem just like coming in every day for, you know, every day for the past three, four weeks, there's been something, right? Something great that's happened, some great opportunity. So you don't need to stress if, it, if it's not for you. Be the trader you want to be. Always make sure that it doesn't matter if, you know, people are, you know, posting lots of gains, hitting lots of percentages, you know, very bullish, very bearish, whatever it is. You'd be the trader you want to be if you're not comfortable to swing right now. Intraday, you don't need to worry about what's the market going to do, right? Bigger picture. Intraday, you see trades that are using what we use. You use the short-term EMAs. 
higher low patterns, squeezes, volume, whatever it is, right? Um, you just you just take it from there. If you think about, you know, if you were all cash today, there's opportunity, right? When AMC started to go uh, SPXL, even on the ES triangle break, Amazon momentum here. Be you, right? Don't and don't worry about what other people are doing because everyone's going to make a mistake. 99% of the traders in any thread that we talk about make a mistake, including myself. I've made a mistake already on Amazon that I don't have a bigger position, but the can't make a new all-time high. It's a good trade. Ultimately, I understand. There's no perfection in trading. It doesn't exist. Be you. But find those trades intraday because intraday you can you have complete control. You know where to place your stop. If you're using AMAs, once it's lost, you get rid of it and that's it. You look for the next opportunity. FAS added more to my long 101 using eight hour 200 EMA as an entry signal. I don't know anything about the 200 e EMA. So if you if you have a history of backtesting and that works, it's not something that I use, but if that's what's working for you. I, I, I've been looking at the banks and thinking, okay, seasonally, right? Um, let's check it out. Let's look at the seasonality of the banks. So, so you know, June, July. Okay, what did we have in here? last june july where were we june july that's the market recovery you know spinning top candlestick let me see before what else did we have in here june july june july a little bit weak right nothing too significant let's let's look before that june july in here sideways trading let me see before this consolidation nothing too significant I'm gonna go back one more because we're not gonna do 50 years we're gonna do one more in here June July yeah not much I can't really say much seasonality for me the, the reason why I was thinking banks were gonna go down was to how far extended we were on the monthly and the weekly charts it just made sense that a new high would be a fake out right so now we've done that we've consolidated is this the end of consolidation though when I look at a chart like this after a major run up, I'm going to anticipate that behavior. I, I have to anticipate this behavior um, because this is how charts play out. I don't care the name or whatever it is, uh, unless the news comes in, significant news, whatever. They all increase their dividends and they're still consolidating, right? It, it didn't really matter. Um, that's how I'm looking at it. You know, could it be a big inverse head and shoulders? Maybe a flat correction, maybe a double bottom. Positionally, uh, positional trade you're thinking long, um, you have a long-term time frame to play out. So regardless if I'm correct or not in here, right? if you think about what's the correction down here, another 1.6%, maybe four to 5%, who cares, right? If you're long, you're thinking bigger time frame, And then that monthly will be back in your favor as we come back down in here, and then we look for a monthly bull flag. Is this leverage? This is leverage though, so, you know, do you want to go leverage on a monthly pullback? Just consider it. I'm not going to discourage you from doing it, but maybe you want to have a hedge, some sort of a hedge, because um, you know I talked about a four or five percent pullback on XLF that would be massive for uh, fast, right? We would be looking at another ten percent. If you could hold that, then okay, your position size is correct. It's a positional trade. Some of the just recent trade ideas we've been talking about, right? Like Disney, we're looking for that. Where's that bottom? Now we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna we're gonna adjust this trend line that that's going to be the bottom. So now when I update the trade idea. That's it there. That's got to be the stop now. And now we could be potentially looking for the breakout of this upper trend line. Same idea for BA, right? Same idea for BA. These are going to have to turn into swing plays. Position sizing to start, like starters, um, because we're not going to have confirmation until we see the rhythm, the momentum. And we think about the same idea that we got in here. 
because what we're going to be looking for is that rotation into you know the some of these Dow names because the Nasdaq's gone explosive right we're, we're looking for that eventual rotation into those names DBGI from a long perspective So Ray, this looks like a major reversal candlestick, right? Um, it does look like a major reversal candlestick because of the gap and sell. So a very extended move, volume, it gapped. I don't know why it gapped. Maybe there was some news, but now you're looking at inside bar, best case scenario tomorrow. I don't know nothing about the name. Obviously it's very new to trading. It's only been on the market since May, but upper wicks, upper wicks, we gap a little bit of a push and now we're seeing a reversal candlestick so i'm going to anticipate this is going to get really choppy for uh, for a period of time and you know on this extension move still seeing sellers in here still going to close with this pressure up in here this zone is likely going to be a problem for a while now what was the news you would know better like what caused this right is it fine it's just going to be an inside bar tomorrow double inside bar triple inside bar and then it gets a break later all the short-term emas needed to catch up look where the four was look where we were trading hourly was off the chart right all right we're outside the bollinger bands we're too far extended right look where we are in relation to the upper bollinger band so all of this stuff needed to happen we did have a previous bounce off of the mbb we're there now as well that's kind of chart where you know you get a gap like that you got to be thinking you know some profit taking easy to say after it's done well we talk about what let's go look at the open right what do we talk about okay two minute pushes up great now we need that higher low higher high wait a second we didn't get a higher low we faded we went lower lower high lower low that gets used to sell Palantir did just go for that break right now. Fubo looks like it's about to go. Shop starting to go. We want to see some increasing volume coming into shop. Apple is all algo now. Disney is algo. Nike bull flag is about to break bull. Well, it is breaking bull is about to make a new high. Lots of stuff happening out there. Also, don't get caught trading like a fart in the wind and trading everything that's moving. Stick to those couple of charts that you're focused on, right? Sorry, guys. Baba? What Baba do? Bought September 210s and sold next week's 210s. Low risk entry here at GP. This is a name you really can't trust, right? <laughs> we know this. You can't trust these names. But I think that, that DD News really hurt what was happening in here, right? Because it did have opportunity to go for a breakout. So where are you looking for the GP? You're looking at the bottom. Yeah, okay. It's a, it's a great uh, risk to reward setup in here. This is going to bounce, right? If this was any other name in the market, I would probably be interested in it myself, but I just don't trust this name. It, it doesn't act right. It's trading price to earnings, the multiples, the valuation doesn't make sense. It's It's, it's like the most undervalued stock in the market. So yeah, I mean, eventually we're gonna look back and say, damn, should have bought Baba at 200s and now it's trading at 1000s, right? So I get it, valuation standpoint. Jack Ma, you know, what's the situation with Jack Ma? Where has he been? You know, is there something to do with that? I don't get it. From a technical standpoint, you're making the right move, right? You're making the right move. Vertical to the downside. Four hour is mashed, right? Four hours at 24, hourly is down over here at 14. You're making the absolute right move. GP move, right? You don't need to look for immediate results. I think it's a fantastic play. 
and then you can add into momentum once it appears right in case you get another gap down tomorrow you're going to want to be patient with it because another gap down is absolutely a buy because we're going to be too far extended even though it's bobbling i hate it it's like over here right look what happened right look how far extended we were and look at the bounce let's also look at it from a four hour actually let's look at it from an hourly oversold perspective right and think about these hourly conditions how often have we dropped below where we currently are right we're currently down in here which is 12 um, how many times have we dropped below this right we got one look at the bounce obviously this would have been a huge bounce looking at the chart that bounced from 211 to 274 over here i know you guys can't see this but you know here we go we dropped uh, 151 we you know, ended up going to 178 you know if i look at this here we didn't drop below we're right in that zone 130 ended up going to 157 yeah this is historically you can see it's very hard to get it, uh, baba lower than this so i like it slamming i think it's a good idea i think from a technical perspective you're buying the fear and it should be rewarded in the next couple of days if not even like later today right yeah um let's move on here talk about space took common shares for a swing trade looking for a good second entry Woo! it held ah very nice i was thinking that it was gonna break and then we would have had a climax it did break let me just double check how i have this drawn so nice little squeeze back up Where did I draw this? That low held nicely. Yep, double bottom in there, perfect, right? Nice play. Took common chairs for swing trade. There's a lot of resistance in here, right? So when we have resistance, I anticipate to be a seller versus to be a swinger. So just keep that in mind. Um, you look for signs that it stalls, right? So I, I'm aware of this. So I don't want to just sell because we get there. Um, but I want to be aware of it because I know there's going to be pressure in that zone. Okay, so be aware of that. Now we have an upper trend line in there. So we can see, do we reject the upper trend line? We don't know if it's valid yet. Could be, right? And draw it a little bit better off of the wick in here. Let's look at it from a line chart. Right? It's very different from a line chart because where we close in here. So I'm not going to use a line chart because there's nothing in there, right? It's all the way down in here. So, you know, we could potentially, I would just be aware of it. This is not valid as of now. Um, I start looking for a potential stall in here. So if I was looking to add to the trade, I want to be adding from a scalper mindset until I lose, you know, I played the bull flag until I lose the 15 minute. I added now, I added in here, I place a stop below the 15 minute higher low, something along those range. Because as we get up into the major resistance, I'm not looking to add there, I'm looking to sell there, right? Because then you could ruin your trade, which is a good trade, you're in a very good trade, and then you add in here and then starts to consolidate you start to you start to lose on your ad which is the equivalent of buying here you, you buy in here and then it comes back down the gains are gone right you don't want to do that so i'd be aware of this but as of right now to stay in the trade 15 minute adma 30 minute higher low right 30 minute higher low we're just going to be looking for 30 minute higher low we got to see what's going to happen in here and let's see if we do form some form of a triangle uh, could be a descending triangle but some form of an upper trend line in here I would just be aware of this now. I wouldn't be like, oh, I need to sell because I have a tick. We would need to see a valid touch off of it. All right, let's move on. Talk about CGC taking. What's up, Joshua? I saw your message. Sorry, I haven't replied yet. Congratulations, by the way, on your success. That's looking really good. I wish I knew what you know when I, when, when I was 22. Right? I wish. 
That'd be fantastic. But congratulations. Uh, taking January 22, 220, sorry, January 22, 21, 30 calls. Looking for a reversal. So it's a long play, so you really need the time to allow that to develop. So, you know, to comment on something so far away, right, to get in the 30s, yeah, you need time. It could absolutely happen. We could see a squeeze again. Like we saw a squeeze in here, we've been consolidating. I do believe we will see eventually another squeeze, but, you know, looking for imminent price action. This imminent price action is not suggesting 30, but yeah, I could see it. Like if we think about, you know, a pattern, right? A, a leg, a second leg, and then a third leg, right? Maybe something along those lines. That could absolutely happen, but we need a lot of information before we could think that's gonna happen, right? As of right now, um, what do we have? This show us a reversal signal. Today's candlestick, you know, the entire market is bouncing today, right? So everything you take with a grain of salt is like, oh, this name's ripping right now. Well, you know, kind of everybody's squeezing right now. So you look at for maybe a double bottom. Is it a double bottom, right? We're gonna close right up over it. Um, we don't have further support until 18. So if we do drop into 18 and you're in 30 calls, you know, you're talking about a 75% move to get up there. That's difficult to predict a 75% move. We are constantly setting up lower highs on the chart, right? Lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, lower high, right? So we can continue to be walking down. Let's look at like from off the bottom, where are we? And I wanna look at this in here, right? And then ABC that we don't break below, like in here, right? Something along those lines. We're right there right now. Um, it's obviously too much of a give back, but you know, we could be back testing the zone and bouncing off of it. That's optimistic, right? We've lost way too much on this chart. So long term time frame, a lot could happen. Anything imminently, maybe it's a back test in here. We're gonna need more information for that trade. MasterCard. MasterCard. All right, let's see what's happening in here. August calls, looking for entry, bottom channel, holding. Or bear flag. I don't see a bear flag in here. I wouldn't call this a bear flag. Like, is this what you're thinking in here? That that's the pull, that's the flag. It's just too much, too much time. It's double the consolidation time, so it shouldn't happen. A bear flag should have been, you know, like, bam, bam, bam. Right? That's what should happen. Shouldn't be. Shouldn't be anything like that. Um, August calls. Visa's a little bit stronger. Right, but Visa's been giving us these little doji candlesticks in here. I like it off of the trend line, right? This is a great entry. And that, that's the only thing we could ask for is a good risk to reward entry. We do have this lower trend line in here that's been absolutely money. No real pattern on the up end. Maybe, you know, we're gonna develop a new pattern in here, right? Something along these lines, and this ends up being a channel. It goes up, no clear trend in here. We see all this choppiness, right? Push back up, immediately shot back down. A lot of choppiness in here. And a lot of these names that have run exponentially, this is an exponential run, have gone through a very long period of consolidation. If you think about it, we've been consolidating for 122 days. We could be cons consolidating for a year in this range. So from a short-term trade perspective, August, you're giving yourself you know, four to six weeks here, actually yeah, five weeks till those monthly calls expire. The entry is off of the lower trend line. And as of right now, you know, can we get up to the upper trend line? You know, we got stuffed in here. So I'm gonna be watching that short term resistance. I don't have like a very clear indication of what's happening in here. You know, maybe it ends up being a wedge, right? So if you lose that lower trend line, I would respect it because maybe we could fall out and we need another touch of the upper. It's not perfectly drawn, but you get the point. That's why we're watching a massacre. Russ, IWM looking for a play off the GP for multi-week swing, July 30, 228. 
Let's go check out what's happening in the Rust Futures first. Okay, so we know we have that top. Lots of lower wicks. Off of the GP. It's a very long period of trading sideways in here, okay? So there's going to be a real big break eventually happening. Are you talking about this GP in here? I know you're talking about IWM, but it's the same thing we're going to be looking at here. Lower wick, lower wick. Okay, let me see what that looks like on IWM. So now we're looking at it from this perspective. Right? That's how we got to be looking at IWM now. Right? Something like this. That's a that's an amazing entry. Right? That's that's all you could ask for. Is a good entry, you give yourself a good risk to reward. Now are you gonna get the breakout? Are you gonna get, you know, you're going green to red, right? If this doesn't work out. You have to respect your stop at today's low. Volume, you know, basically it's a big lower wick that's happening because of what happened in the futures market. Right, this big volume coming in today. That's great. You know, we're closing under the hourly ADMA. I don't want to see that. But in order to put that bottom in, we need a trend change. And now, in addition to the trade, even 224.10 breaks, we get the hourly trend change, this hourly downtrend. What happens to reverse a trend, right? You have a trend down in here. We have a trend in here. Big uptrend. We get a reversal. Right, look at the volume on the reversal. Lower high, lower low. ABC correction back up. One, two, three, four. Well, maybe just gonna count that as a one. And now we want that reversal back up. Let me see what that looks like back on the Rust Futures. Yeah, I mean, that's a big volume, right? So now we have a hourly top. Which, hap which coincides with the IWM's hourly eight. So now we have an evening star candlestick, bear volume, right? It's a small reversal. We need that, we need that higher low. And ideally we could get it right off of that hourly 80 me. Chopped around, chopped around, resistance, resistance, flushed, closed under it, push back over it, back test it, higher low and go. That's what you're gonna wanna see. Shop didn't get the volume. Fubo's not getting the volume. ES now potentially can go for the hourly higher low, losing the hour the 15 minute ADMA. Watch the 31st. RTY. All right, let's move on. XOM in 58 puts for next week. You know, I, the concern is that it's too late for the put play that this flush down is going to create a short-term reversal back up and then the lower high. So keep that in mind. I would really want to respect the stop in here. If you're in already and you're just letting it develop, then that's fine. You have the momentum, the trades on your side. But if that breaks, then be a little bit cautious, right? Then you're going very far away from the money. You know, 60 to 62, that's a big difference for the 58s. So, but if you're in off of the top, like you played it from there, then you do have time to, you know, because you have gains on your side. But this could be, you know, a push back up to 61, could be a push back up to that trend line. Palantir, so uh, I think that's the going to be the end of the correction. I'm going to be prepared for just one more downside, right? One more push to the downside, which would mean we would need the market to either do a double bottom or the market to get this engulfing bear volume that does give us a further push down to 425. If the market does that, then all these bounces today are gonna get smashed tomorrow, and we're gonna be back down into those ideal entry zones, which would be here. 0.5, this is absolutely, it makes sense. It makes sense, right? We're coming off of here, we go for a big leg up, we come back down, we don't break down below the zone, we bounce off of the 0.5, and now we go make a new high. That's how I'm going to play it. That's how I'm going to look at it. 
We're going to need to get up over the four hour ADMA, non extended hours. Extended hours are right there. That's what's pushing us down. We're going to want to get a close up over that. Right now, I'm not seeing a squeeze. Like, I'm thinking we could, we have opportunity for a squeeze, but on this new high that we just got, we didn't get the volume. So, if you're in, there's still like no major red flag. We're still going to want to close over the four. Um, I'm going to swing pounds here. Positional trade. I'm going to hate myself again, but only comments for now. Um, I know some traders grabbed some calls. I think it was, they were liking August 24th or July 16, 24, something like that. But for, from my perspective, that should be the bottom, right? If we do come down into here, we're gonna be back testing the zone, it'll still be fine, but we're worth the entry and swing position from here, from a positional trade standpoint. And then when we see momentum, we could start thinking about shorter term option trades, weekly, something along those lines. Biki, Biki, building a long-term share position. It's a good, it's a good entry, right? You're getting a reversal candlestick in here. You got an extended move down. That could be the end of this consolidation phase, right? It could be the end of it. Okay, so this is all-time lows as well. You must like it from a fundamental perspective versus just a chart perspective because when any when any time I hear someone talk about a long-term position, that means they like the company. Um, so when you like the company and you have a entry signal like this, that's a good position to get in. All-time low, reversal candlestick, double bottom hold, extended vertical move to the downside. Now this could be a trade that goes green to red, right? It starts off great, rejects the day that you made, new all-time low, bear flags, drops down. You'd like to see the bull volume increasing tomorrow and you know to feel comfortable to get back up over this daily ADMA. Macy's. If you're looking for an entry for a swing, you're gonna to wanna to be in now and just placing your stop there, right? Vertical to the downside, reversal candlestick, and then looking for a move back up to the daily ADMA. That's how I'd be looking at it. It does look like you have a lower trend zone in here that's been holding, right? You look at that entire zone, right? Look at it. it's always being bought up in here. So that's a good spot with a stop below today. Cause then if we lose that lower trend, it's gonna be a little bit of a red flag. And we could look at this as some form of a triangle in here, probably right off of there, right? Coming off of this zone. If we look at it from a line, right, in here, that's why I started it here, not this over here, right, right in there, using those two zones. Yeah, this, is good. this could be an opportunity, this could be a triangle. Right, that would be the bottom of the triangle right there. Baba, we already did. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace out. No recap video tonight. Um, back tomorrow morning live. Summer schedule, right? Just trying to take it easy on how many recaps we do. But tomorrow morning, we'll be back on live. Peace out, everybody.